what we found out this week. We have a tremendous amount of meatball recipes and it was time to put them all together. When you walk into Costco and you see the giant bag of meatballs and you wonder to yourself, what would I do with those other than spaghetti and meatballs or meatball subs? That question was posed to me by my friend Bethany this week. <laughs> she was saying, you know what would be great? If you did a video that taught me what to do with my frozen meatballs other than those two things. So today we're gonna answer that question for you and we have nine recipes. So we're gonna go beyond spaghetti and meatballs here. We also are gonna share with you at the end a recipe if you wanna make your own homemade meatballs because of course you can make any of these recipes today with homemade meatballs. So let's get to the recipes. This first recipe is Asian meatballs, super simple. Into your large freezer bag, you're going to put two pounds of those frozen meatballs that are already cooked. Then you're gonna add some minced garlic. We like to add our garlic from a jar. It saves us a step and you can buy that at Costco as well. And some lime juice, soy sauce, sesame oil, some ginger. We like to use the squeezy tube ginger for our ginger. It tastes fresher than the ground ginger and it's just a nice little easy addition, just like that minced garlic. Then we're going to add some green onions that have been sliced, and that is absolutely it. You can squish all of that together into your bag so that it combines it. That way you also save yourself some dishes and don't have to mess a mixing bowl. And then you're going to get as much of the air as you can out of your bag. Because when you're freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn. So here at Freezer Meals 101, we always recommend that you get all of that air out. Actually, we say that air is the enemy. Air is the enemy. It's true, only in freezer meals though. Otherwise, you know, life and all that. All right, exactly. Yeah. So then you're gonna get that put in your freezer. On the day you go to make this, you can heat it in your skillet or in your oven. This one is great served over rice or rice noodles. Awesome, and it is really easy. It is very, very simple. This next recipe is honey garlic meatballs, and it is also very easy, so pay attention. We are going to add in our meatballs into our freezer bag. We're going to add in some olive oil, soy sauce, honey, again with the minced garlic from the jar, and a little bit of water. And that is it. We're going to squish that all around in the bag and again get as much air as we can out of the bag and seal it up. Freeze these and then when you go to eat them you can do them on the stovetop or in your slow cooker. Super easy again. And the sauce is really nice on the rice and then it's easy to pair with like a nice simple stir fry and you have a complete meal. It is super easy. We're gonna get the elephant in the room out of the way. Yes, we are in my somewhat renovated kitchen, but <laughs> that is not the backsplash. The backsplash is the missing splash that yes. we need in this kitchen. <laughs> but, but look at, look at, oh. The countertop is done and your massive electrical outlet is missing. Yes, so we are making progress. We are not there yet. We had hoped to be filming our mega session this week. For those of you that don't know, I'm Sharla. I'm Christy. Every three months we get together and we do over 100 freezer meals in this kitchen. And we'll pop a video right there for our last mega session, but we are actually way overdue. We're running out, We thankfully. are running low. We've yes. had a few catch-up sessions. Yeah which is fine, which is good, but yeah, we are scraping the bottom <laughs> of the freezer, so to say, and it's an uncomfortable feeling. It is, you start to get worried, like am I gonna be one of those people that has to worry about what to make for dinner? <laughs> it is a terrible feeling, and if you're feeling that right now, you need to stick with us, because we will help you solve that problem. <laughs> so we were planning for that to be our first video that we filmed in the new kitchen and did the big reveal and whatever, but as renovations go, mm -hmm. it's taken weeks longer than we thought or expected, and so here we are. We have the counters. We have the counters. Really They're beautiful. <laughs> It's nice and bright in here. Your handles are where they belong instead of the old 80s position that who does that? Exactly. But you're just gonna have to ignore the orange glue <laughs> behind us or yellow, orange, what a mustard no. color. Yeah, that's a dirty mustard, a Dijon. <laughs> Let's make it fancy, it's Dijon. Oh, it's Dijon. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that I said we were not going to be 
only doing spaghetti and meatballs, but what would a what do you do with your meatballs video be without spaghetti mm -hmm. and meatballs? This is the easiest version you're ever gonna find. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add those pre-cooked frozen meatballs, a jar of pasta sauce, so that is super simple, or you can add the red sauce to this. You can find the red sauce recipe in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. The link for that is down below. Then you're gonna add some rosemary, a little bit of lemon juice, some salt and pepper, and that is seriously it. Six ingredients, including your salt and pepper, and you have a full meal here. So you're going to get the air out of that bag. Again, squish it to combine it, seal it, and get that into your freezer. On the day you go to cook this, you can heat it in a skillet or in your slow cooker, and then you can serve this on top of pasta, generally, of course, spaghetti for spaghetti and meatballs, or you could turn this into meatball subs, but we are going to have an amazing, very, very perfect meatball sub recipe coming up later, so I would save the meatball subs for that one. The other thing you can do with this is you can create a pasta bake with it. So you can cook up some noodles, maybe a penne or a rotini, drain them, and then you would put the noodles and this meatball sauce mixture into a large casserole dish, then cover it with some mozzarella cheese, bake it in the oven until it's like bubbly delicious mm -hmm. and that would be a really good way to serve this one. That sounds really good. Yes, it does. This next recipe is super easy again and this is a little bit different because this is an appetizer. These are cocktail meatballs. We're going to start out with our meatballs in our bag. We're going to add in a can of jellied cranberry sauce, some chili sauce, brown sugar, and lemon juice. Five ingredients or less, and you have the beginning of a party. <laughs> this one is easy to do. It is e easy, easy, easy. It is the word of the day because these are pre-cooked meatballs for the most part. Again, you could do these with homemade meatballs, absolutely. Throw them in your slow cooker a couple of hours before your party starts, and then just keep them warm throughout the evening, and they're going to be perfect to serve with toothpicks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are a kid favorite around this <laughs> Stephanie. Around these parts. Around these parts, <laughs> yes. The thing that I like about having meatballs at a gathering is you've got them over in your slow cooker, you're not even thinking about them, but they're hearty. Mm -hmm. So people can, you know, have a little bit more of a meal instead of just all your little finger food appetizers, which I also have. She does. I learned very early on to not ever eat before coming to your house for just about anything ever. But if you do have a bigger appetite when you get here and you think the little fingery foods aren't going to do it for you, it is nice to have those meatballs. It is. Absolutely it is. And especially if there's kids at your party. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to do all of these meatball ideas all at once because there's nine different recipes here, you would need more than one of those Costco meatball bags, but... Probably if, only two though. Right, they are giant bags. They are big bags. If you decided that you wanted to do this, there is a lot of variety here, and mm -hmm. we'd suggest that you maybe go and watch one of our chicken videos. We'll stick one of those. <laughs> right there so that you get a little bit of variety in your freezer. Maybe spend an afternoon making these meatball videos and then spend an afternoon doing some chicken meals and then you might have like a, a little more balance or a month worth of meals. Absolutely. But, and yes, more balance. A little bit more balance in your freezer. But these because they're using the pre-cooked meatballs, they really would come together in you could do all nine recipes in, I'm sure, an hour, an hour. Oh yeah, easily hour in the half. afternoon, including your prep, mm -hmm. for sure. So this next recipe is those meatball subs that I was telling you about. These are so good. Mm -hmm. These are like your family will come running kind of good. Although you're, they're your favorite. I love these. I absolutely love these. My family is only so-so. Okay, listen, I used to work at Subway when I was in college. I was a sandwich artist and I learned how good a meatball, it wasn't something we ate growing up. So a meatball sub is good. It is stick to your ribs. It is warm. It is homey. We do kick it up a notch. Yes, we do. But I still make a change mm. because this one calls we make it with baguettes because then it's a little fancier and it's it brings it up and it doesn't get as soggy. We'll explain. But I sometimes find baguettes hurt my mouth. 
Okay. I have it. I have a tender mouth. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. So I would happily make these on hoagie buns, like mm -hmm. or big sub buns, and be totally fine with it. It is a nice option to have to have the baguettes. So Charlotte, take it away. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add those meatballs, of course, and then some Italian seasoning, minced garlic, again from a jar, pasta sauce, now you can use jarred pasta sauce, or again, we usually use our red sauce recipe because it's just got such depth of flavor and is, is worth that extra effort. And that's all that's going in your large freezer bag, so you're going to get the air out of that, seal it up, and then in a quart size medium freezer bag you're going to put a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese and then you're going to take out two baguettes now at Costco you can buy the baguettes in a two pack so it's mm -hmm. kind of perfect for this recipe and if you're going there anyway to get the meatballs you might as well nab some of those and then you're just going to cut each baguette into thirds so you end up with six total subs and then you're gonna slice your baguettes and cover them with some garlic butter that's been softened and put those in their own large freezer bag. So now in your freezer, you've got your baguettes completely ready to go. You've got that mozzarella cheese that you can top it with at the end there and you've got your meatballs. So on the day you go to make this, you just cook those meatballs up in the slow cooker. Now, if you were in a hurry, you could cook them in a skillet and then you just gonna toast those buns quickly in the oven and then top one side of the buns with your meatballs and sauce, sprinkle it with the cheese, put it back in the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt. I just put it on broil at that point. And then you're gonna top it with the other half and serve it. And of course, if you are like Christy and you find that the baguettes hurt your mouth, you could do this instead with sub buns or hoagie buns. Yes. Oh, they are so good. You're gonna laugh at me, but even like a toasted BLT, I've told you this before, a toasted BLT sandwich, I can't have it toasted. It, I don't yeah. know what, I can eat toast, but when it's in a sandwich like that, it, yeah, it hurts my mouth. I'm a wimp and I'm, <laughs> guess I'm okay with that. I have to be if I want to enjoy the food. All right, yeah, make it work for you. The next meatballs on the docket are simple Swedish meatballs. We have finally got there. We are away from the Italian and we're into the, oh, we've done the Asian, we're out of the, we're not out totally out of the Italian. We're into the Swedish. We start out with our meatballs in our bag. We're going to add in a couple of cans of cream of mushroom soup, some sour cream, soy sauce, parsley, nutmeg, which is like my favorite ingredient to put in this. I love that there's nutmeg in there and a little bit of pepper and that is it. We're going to again mix it around in the bag because that is the easiest way to do this without dirtying another dish. We're going to remove that excess air, seal and freeze. On the day of cooking, again, this is a great one to do in your oven or to do in your slow cooker. Now, when you are freezing meatballs, you may find it's hard to get the air out. We have said the air is the enemy when it comes to freezer meals. It is a little bit hard to get the air out. Do you know what some people suggest? Now we don't do this because when we do so many at a time, we just don't have time. But if you have a sink full of water or a large bowl full of water, if you dip your freezer bag into it, that water will create pressure around the meatballs and squeeze the air out the top and then you can seal it. So we get that recommendation all the time. We don't personally do it, partly because we're pretty good at getting the air out. We've, yeah. we've made over 5,000 freezer meals together. We've gotten pretty good at it, but it is a way, if you are concerned about that air, to do it that way. This next one is my kids' favorite meatball recipe, like favorite, favorite, favorite. Actually, one of our older sons is going to be moving out in a couple of months, and I know that if I ever text him in the future and say, hey, we're having the sweet and sour <laughs> meatballs tonight he will come home so i'm not worried about never mm -hmm. seeing him <laughs> right he will come home for the meatballs this is how you get your kids to keep coming back you just feed them exactly so our sweet and sour sheet pan meatballs the other thing that makes them amazing other than the taste is that it's a sheet pan meal so you're dirtying less dishes it's super fast to cook up this is just good all kinds of ways. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add those frozen meatballs, some chopped green beans, just frozen ones, 
a can of pineapple slices that's been drained and a sliced onion. So this did require a tiny bit of prep for me because you had to slice that onion. In a small bowl, you're gonna mix together some brown sugar, flour, vinegar, water, soy sauce, and a little bit of ketchup. Once that's all mixed together, you're gonna pour the sauce into the bag, squish it to combine it with everything, remove that excess air again, seal it, and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, it could not be easier. You're gonna thaw it, and then you're gonna lay this out in a single layer on a cookie sheet. We suggest that you put parchment paper down first because that makes cleanup even easier. And then you're just gonna bake this at 400 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. That means in half an hour, you can have a full meal on the table. We usually serve this with rice, and it's already got some veggies in there, so this is this is it. This is dinner. This is dinner and it, it is a hit. <laughs> now, hit. <laughs> if you look at this recipe, you're going to say, oh, that's so much sugar. You don't understand. We cut the sugar in half. And then we cut it down again. And then we cut it down again. So if you look at this and you still think it's a little bit sweet, go ahead and cut it down a little bit further if you feel like we feel like we've hit the right amount for our families. Because it's a once in a while meal, right? We're not having this every I, single day but your son would if you can. yes my kids would like it if we had it every day but we don't yeah and, you know when we do our mega sessions we make four of each meal so my family ends up with two Chrissy's family ends up with two my kids in those three months they get this twice twice <laughs> and I think that's a good amount for the sugar it is here. just the right amount and it is a-okay to do that sometimes and it's good it's really good it is really good this next recipe it's a bit of a weird one, but it is a really, really delicious one. It is meatball soup, and we start with our meatballs in the bag. We're going to add in our garlic. We are going to also add in some diced onion, some carrots that have been peeled and sliced, some diced zucchini, and a jar of pasta sauce. We will also add in some Italian seasoning and, of course, a bay leaf. For the day of cooking, we're going to add in three or four cups of water or beef broth if you want it to be a little bit richer. Then we will seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, once you saw this, you can put it into a pot on your stovetop and you wanna add in three or four cups of water or maybe beef broth and you just bring it to a boil and then reduce and simmer for 20 minutes, maybe half an hour at the most. Or you can do it right in your slow cooker a couple of hours on low and you have supper. This recipe is another party recipe, and it's called party meatballs. <laughs> we had to make them different from cocktail meatballs somehow, <laughs> so we just called them party meatballs. I wasn't sure what to call them, so there you C go. Come to us if you want to name things in your house. <laughs> We've got that, uh, my husband named something that... The that's chili? Not the kind so, of chili. Kind of chili. <laughs> kind of chili. Kind of chili. It's, it's not beans. really chili. It's beans with a bit of chili. Salsa. Salsa and chili seasoning. It's kind of chili. <laughs> Anyway, naming is not our forte, but flavors are. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is delicious. Okay, so these party meatballs into your bag, you are going to put three ingredients. Yes, you heard that right. You're gonna put three ingredients and then you're gonna call it a party. Everyone's gonna ask you for the recipe before they go home and they're not gonna believe that this was three ingredients or you could tell them that it's a family secret Right? And then this could be the dish that you get asked to bring to every gathering. Mm -hmm. And instead of being called party meatballs, they could be called Lenore's meatballs. Right? Or Rhonda's meatballs. Right? Or Sarah's meatballs. They totally Whatever could be. Whatever your name is. To this day, my husband and I still talk about Dee's delights. And he yeah. named them. Do you know what it is? It is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a piece of white bread. Spread with uh, whipped cream cheese, rolled in bacon, twisted, and then baked until the bacon is crispy, and then she chops them up. That's all it is. We, we've talked about it being a freezer meal, but it's not going to work. No. So I'm sorry, you'll have to just make these delights fresh on your own. We were camping, and he made friends with these people from Nebraska. They were lovely. We're in Canada, so we were a long way from home. We were in southern Utah in Moab. And so D, if you're watching, we still talk about them. And my husband came and knocked on my camper and said, you have to come, you have to come eat these. <laughs> and so I went and we did. And so while we're sitting there, I'm like, what do you call these? What is it? What is in these? And she's like, I don't, and she told me what they were. And, and my husband said, they're called D's Delights. <laughs> 
And so we've called them that forever. And it is, couldn't be more simple unless it's party meatballs. So pay attention. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add some meatballs and then grape jelly and chili sauce. That's it. Three ingredients, including the meatballs. You're gonna squish that to combine it, get out that air again, seal it and freeze it. On the day that you go to make these or bring them to a party to impress everyone, you're either gonna simmer them on the stove top or in a saucepan, or you're gonna cook them in the slow cooker. Now here's the kicker. You cook them for one to two hours. That's it. That's it. Cause these are pre-cooked meatballs. When you're buying the Costco meatballs, you're just putting them in there and making sure that they're at a safe temperature to eat. Then they're already cooked. So it doesn't take long in the slow cooker. You just really want the flavors to meld. The grape jelly and the <laughs> and chili, the chili sauce. sauce. That's it. Now, here's something funny. In our Facebook group, if you aren't in it, you should be in it because it is one of the most lovely places on the internet to be. And there was a woman in the UK that was having a hard time finding grape jelly, oh. which I was really surprised about because yeah. I thought they would be like the preserves capital of the world. Right. Okay, I understand that preserves and jelly and jam, are, they're all different, but they, she couldn't find grape jelly. So some, somebody suggested the cranberry sauce and I thought, well, then they'll just be cocktail meatballs. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but she didn't need to know that. That was okay. <laughs> no. She found something and that worked. I think she used plum. Okay. Well, that would work. Really, if you can't find grape jelly, go ahead and try something else. It's going to be good. You know, cherry might work. It would be a little mm. bit tarter. Sure. But it might work. Somebody suggested she go to Ikea and buy lingonberry. Okay. Because... You see, it's such a helpful group. It is such a helpful group. It really is. Okay, so we know that for a lot of you, those pre-cooked meatballs that you can grab from Costco are a great way to go. Oh, I do want to mention that while you're there, you might want to get some pasta sauce because a lot of these recipes called for pasta sauce and right. you can get a three pack at Costco. Yes, you can. So another video. I'm going to put one right there. It's a Costco video. Oh, we just did a Costco and video. So we're gonna stick that there. But that has all kinds of ideas of things that you can, and some of them are the meatball ideas. So, you know, yep, but they're in there too. Lots, lots more ideas in there. So, anyway, I digressed a little on the whatever, but I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, that never happens. <laughs> I'm back. And <laughs> I'm back. And what I wanted to say though is that it's great. If you like those Costco meatballs and you can eat them, mm -hmm. but not everyone can because I haven't checked if they're gluten free. I haven't checked if they're, you know, whatever free. Like if you have dietary issues, you might not be able to eat those meatballs. And we have a solution for you because we, we have a really delicious homemade meatball recipe. You can make this and make a lot at one time and you can freeze them either raw or you can cook them, cool them and freeze them. Mm -hmm. And then they are ready to add to any one of these recipes. So that is a really, really great thing. Again, if you have dietary issues or if you just want to be a little bit healthier and want to know exactly what's in your meatballs, we've got the solution for that. Absolutely. Now, specifically, these are keto friendly. So there are no um, breadcrumbs or oats added in that could change that, just so you know. So to start out in a pretty large bowl, because this does actually make a lot, we're going to mix together ground beef and ground pork. You're going to add in mozzarella cheese that's been shredded, as well as some shredded Parmesan. We're going to add in heavy cream or whipping cream, same diff, sort of, and eggs, tomato paste, minced garlic again from our jar, some finely chopped onion, which is really the only other prep that we are doing in this mm -hmm. whole series of for the meatballs, and then your spices, your parsley, your basil, and your salt and pepper. You're going to mix that all together. Now, if you are the squeamish type, go ahead and wear gloves. If you want, go ahead and use a spoon or your mixer. I have totally made meatballs or meatloaf in my KitchenAid mixer, so I really don't have to do the hard work. Be careful that you don't overdo it because they end up a little bit mushy. And then you can start making your meatballs. Now we can use the cookie scoop or an ice cream scoop, or sometimes I will use like a, a quarter cup or a third cup measuring cup and scoop that and then divide that in two. 
and then you know that you're gonna get evenly distributed meatballs. Get them onto your cookie sheet, and like Sharla said, you can either freeze them like that and cook them individually. Now, this worked really well for you when your husband was doing keto, mm -hmm. because then he could just take out however many he wanted to eat and make them individually. You can par cook them, you can totally cook them, and then just reheat them. Whatever you like to do, just do it in your oven, and if you really wanted to, you could, you know, roll them around in butter in your frying pan and get a crust on them before you cook them. It is entirely up to you. These are your homemade meatballs. One thing to note is if you do want to cook them first and then freeze them, you want to wait until they're fully cooled before you even add them to the bags. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to get some condensation in there and that will cause you some issues like frost and freezer burn and those kind of things. So you just want to wait until there's all kinds of reasons, but let's just simplify it and say that. And even fully cooked, it might not be a bad idea to freeze them individually first before you add them to the bag because if there's any moisture at all, then they'll, they'll, stick, they'll together. stick together. So go ahead and freeze them first, get them into your freezer just bag. Just lay them on a cookie sheet flat, mm -hmm. freeze them like that, and then, yeah. Yep, and they're perfect. And hey, listen, if you are not a member of our Freezer Meals 101 Club, there is a link below and I'd like you to check it out because these recipes are in the club. I mean, they're on the website too. Obviously the links are below, but the beauty of the club is that you can make your own meal plan. You can have meatballs and chicken and beef if you would like. You can adjust the serving sizes and it will spit out an ingredients list for you, a prep list for you. You can make your own printable labels right out of the club. There's a ton of videos and tips and tricks and other PDFs of meal plans that are just there for the taking and we just really encourage people to have a look at it because it is also a really great service and system to be able to use for your meal planning. It takes the guesswork out, which is really... The it really takes the guesswork out. It really, really does. And our club members love it. So if you are a club member, shout it out down below. We would like to uh, talk that up a bit today. Thank you again for joining us. Happy cooking and happy meatballs. <laughs> happy meatballs to you. Oh, oh, like wipe out and big balls to you. <laughs> We're out.